Secretary of State Hillary Clinton made her first official trip to Asia last week, having dinners with heads of state in Japan, South Korea, Indonesia, and China. Clinton brought the message of renewed diplomacy and the promise to strengthen bonds with Asian governments. Commentators have hailed Clinton's goodwill, seeing it as a positive sign. We're joined now by Mike Morrell, who's here to offer his perspective on Clinton's fence mending. Hey, everybody. Now, when I saw that Hillary Clinton was attending all these diplomatic dinners, two things occurred to me. One, we both like short haircuts. And two, <laughs> like her, I also appreciate the value of diplomacy. So I've decided to invite a couple people I've offended to dinner and not just sweep those bad feelings under a rug, but to smother them under plate after plate of deliciousness. As we all know, I like books, but there was one piece of literature that I was not so keen on. Tom DeFalco's Peter Porker Spider Ham. <laughs> I thought all he did was take the character of Peter Parker, change an A to an O, and call it a day. So I launched a smear campaign against his lack of originality, and hundreds of strongly worded letters later felt I was making some progress. But as with most hatreds, it was based in ignorance. So the other day I sat down with a spider ham omnibus, crapped, cu cracked the cover, and was blown away. <laughs> DeFalco has created a completely new, different, and all right, I'll say it, genius idea. <laughs> I think we've all wondered at one point or another, how would Spider-Man be different if he were a pig? <laughs> well, I respect a man who stopped wondering and just told us, and the answer is he'd be better. I'd like to pigify more literature. Take a look at Moby Dick, Captain Pighab. Now you've got a pig captaining a ship and going after a whale. That's a conflict we all want to see. <laughs> in America, we all know there's corruption in the world of pig politics. We're not naive, but how deep does it go? Read all the Pig King's men and find out. You could learn a lot from him, J-Pig. See what I did there? I changed a letter in your name and now you're the host of PNN, the Pig News Network. <laughs> now I don't have to wonder what this show would be like if it were hosted by Spider Ham's cousin. That's right, you basically come from swine royalty. <laughs> now I think every good dinner needs a visionary, a dreamer, or in this case, a dream. That's right, I'm going to invite the Nosferatu vampire from my nightmares. The one where I'm always being held in a cold, dank high school bathroom as backup food for when the hunt doesn't go well, and there's one vampire who's feasting on a now dead guy that I had a chat with about four minutes ago in my dream. So he looks up and he says, I'll get to you later. Great question, J-Pig. Why would I invite one of my nightmares to dinner when he most likely wants to eat me? I'll tell you. It's so we can find some common ground and start getting along. There's no reason why a human and a vampire can't be friends. I've read the Twilight books. I've read the Spider-Ham strip where he befriends Count Pigula. So don't tell me it can't work. Maybe we'll get along so well that he'll make me a vampire because he doesn't want this friendship to only last one mortal lifetime. Then whenever someone says a cliche like, life's too short, I'll put my arm around my fellow immortal. We'll laugh and say, not for us. Then he'll say, I'm starving. I'll say, I feel like Chinese. Everybody wins except for that one delicious bastard. Okay. Now we've got writers and dreamers covered. What's dinner lacking? Family. Maybe try to help someone I love mend a fence. I'm going to invite my nan. She's 84 years, she's 84 years of racism packed into one hate-loving package. She once spotted an Asian man on TV and exclaimed, yuck. And it's hard for her to spot things with only one eye. Oh yeah. She did have the option of outpatient surgery to repair her retina, but chose blindness with her now famous catchphrase, Fuck it, I'm 84, I'll go blind in one eye, rather than have an Asian surgeon help me. Also, she's never been to a dentist in her life. Nan thinks all doctors are Asians. So whenever a tooth is bothering her, she ties it to a doorknob and pulls it out, leaving her with four teeth and an eye patch. That's right, Nan looks like a pirate matron. If pirate matrons hated Asians and looked like my Nan. So, Mike, uh, how would the dinner you'd have with your nan change her views? Dinner wouldn't change anything, JP. <laughs> she's a one-eyed, four-toothed, 84-year-old racist. She's, she's had lots of practice, but she's also my nan. Sometimes the best diplomacy is to love the sinner and hate the sin. Or, as we say in my family, every time nan starts yelling racial slurs in a crowded restaurant or school play, fuck it, she's 84. <laughs> JPIG. Mike Morrell, everyone.